It's Friday, February 12, 2010, and it might as well be Christmas Day on the campus of Grambling State University. There's snow on the ground, and the New Orleans Saints won the Super Bowl just five days ago. Come on, Jacoby, push in right now. Four inches of snow fell overnight in North Louisiana. While that was enough to close school for the day, the Grambling Tigers football squad did not get the morning off. Let's go, fellas. You can play in the snow later. Right now, we're working in it. Come on, Mike. Finish, Mike. I thought you won it, Quentin. I thought you won it. Only G-Man can do this. And only one man can take credit for putting this small North Louisiana town on the national map. Eddie Robinson. I love the game of football, but I love the boys who play. I love the people who play the game of football more than I love football. And you know, sometimes I, I tell my wife that I feel maybe my time may run out before I give back the football what football is given cool, to cool. me. Friday was also the eve of Eddie Robinson's 91st birthday. Inside the former women's gymnasium, there are a few presents to unwrap. And it's a great day for Grambling and for the Robinson family and for all the football world, and we, we thank you for being here. So, Coach and Coach, why don't y'all grab the, grab the uh, pull straight down, and you're going you're gonna to unveil this statue. And folks, we're coming down, baby. There it is. All right. Celebrating the fact that Coach Rob had one job and one wife, Doris Robinson. Eddie's wife of over 60 years is also honored just down the hall. In Louisiana, a Saints Super Bowl victory and an Eddie Robinson Museum had about the same snowball's chance of ever coming true. And yet, it all happened in the same week. Grambling State University welcomed former players, fans, alumni, and family to kick off the opening of the Eddie G. Robinson Museum. Players spanning six decades marched one block in frigid conditions to take their place at the steps of this new football shrine. My father, well, as I have said many times before, just the thought of someone having an idea to consider building or uh, renovating a structure of any kind in the name of a family member to us is just unbelievable. My father always liked the saying that dreamers are the saviors of the world. Well, this is certainly a dream come true for the Robinson family. With 408 victories over 57 years, Eddie Robinson's dream was to turn Grambling football into the Notre Dame of historically black colleges. No one disputed the claim, not even the head football coach of Notre Dame. Today is a historic day. For the entire country, the eyes are on Grambling. And it is a unifying day because all of Grambling's assets are here today. And in that are the people that represent Grambling. And that's why it was important for me personally to be here today. Because in our profession today, there's so much cynicism. There's so much talk about the next job. All Coach Rob cared about was the next young man. And getting an opportunity to teach and coach and mentor and develop. So that's why at the University of Notre Dame, it's an honor for us to share in this great day here in this great state of Louisiana. Thank you very much. The spirit and voice of Coach Rob arrived just in time during the speech of longtime friend and colleague Wilbur Ellis. Wait just a minute, I got a telephone call. <laughs> Be quiet so I can hear. Hello? Yeah, this is Elliot. This is Eddie. Coach, how you doing? 
Yeah, we're here. It happened, Coach. Yeah, we're so proud. Can happen anywhere but in America. You're right, Coach. Happy birthday, Coach. Happy birthday. The weekend of celebration also included a black tie banquet. In addition to teaching the finer points of football, Coach Robinson taught his young men many life skills, including the basics of etiquette. Coach Robinson taught us open the door for a lady. Yes, sir. No, sir. How to sit at the proper table and use the proper fork and a spoon. Now, I know this because I was at his house and ate there many times. Yeah, well, he, he would think it would be great, you know, get to see his guys walking around tuxedo, you know, coming from uh, Mississippi and some of the poor area of Louisiana and in, in Mississippi. You know, he said, you know, he'd look at you and say, boy, you, hey, you're not the 17-year-old kid I saw way back when. And he would be proud. He'd be proud to know that, uh, that uh, his players turned out great. Eddie Robinson and his Grambling State Tigers devoured opponents over most of the 20th century. And he made a personal commitment that no man would outwork, out hustle, or out study him in his quest to create one of the greatest football programs ever. I want the guys who play for us to play in the NFL. But now, if I were in the, sci in the sciences, I'd be out there trying to get somebody to help put the man in space. This is what it is. Whatever field you in, you got to work like. When I first got here, you know, uh, practice in the summertime leading up to the fall, we was on the grass at 5.30 in the morning. So you can imagine you got a bunch of young guys who try to stay up all night talking to their buddies, and you go into bed 12, 1 o'clock at night, and you got to be on the football field at 5.30. That's a possibility that a lot of people might not wake up. And Coach knew it. So he, I could see him now, hell, baby, bang, ding, 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 it's time to go. Hell, baby, you be rolling and say, oh, man. And you, you know what? You had to get up because the old police said you had somebody trying to take your job. I, I think uh, Hero would kind of be understating it. Uh, you know, he is, he's the one. Uh, he's the guy that, that paved the road that we all walk on. And I think that if you're in this profession, you understand the gravity of that. But I don't think you have to be uh, in this profession to understand the impact of, of Coach Rob. Eddie Robinson was born in Jackson, Louisiana, and grew up in Baton Rouge. After graduating from Leland College with a bachelor's degree in English, he married his high school sweetheart, Doris Mott. As Eddie saw it, she was always in his game plan. Well, we coded uh, for those eight years. and You didn't rush in enough. No, we didn't <laughs> rush in. But the only reason I didn't rush in to marrying, no one in my family had ever finished elementary school. Wow. And I made I made a vow, wow. and I told I told Doris this the first time we were coding that I had to finish high school, I had to finish college. That she was the person I wanted to marry, but I had made a promise, you know, I wasn't going to marry until somebody in this Robinson and Stewart family would uh, would finish college. Well, I never was interested in anybody else after I saw him in high school, and I never I never did know him to not work because when I met him he was shining shoes and selling papers and strawberries and <laughs> whatever you know and he was always gonna work you knew he was gonna work after graduating college Robinson spent his summer toiling in a hot muggy feed mill it was there when he heard about a job opening in Grambling and I was working at a feed mill and boy, to get a job to get you out of that feed mill <laughs> with lifting those big sacks. I was looking for another job, but the feed mill was good to me because I was getting a siren. And I didn't have a telephone, and, uh, and, but I, I'd give them the feed mill's number. And I went in and, and told the person who was in charge to whom I was responsible, uh, my supervisor, and I asked him to let me use telephone. I wanted to apply for a job. <laughs> Robinson got the job to coach football at the Louisiana Negro Normal and Industrial Institute in Grambling. It paid $63.75 a month. Along with coaching duties, Robinson mowed the fields, 
taped the ankles, and wrote game accounts for local newspapers. In the early days, Eddie Robinson also taught phys ed and coached men's and women's basketball. By the time future NBA Hall of Famer Willis Reed came to the campus from Jonesboro, Coach Rob was coaching strictly football. Matter of fact, he tried to recruit me to come to uh, Graham to play football. But I had a chance to see uh, Juice Buchanan and Ernie Ladd with uh, basketball shorts on the basketball team. And these guys were so big and muscular, and I was a, like a 225 skinny 6'9 kid out of high school. I said, I'm not playing football at Graham. And he coached Bob Hopkins, who was a great scorer. Uh, those are things that you sometimes never know about a guy. One thing about him, he wasn't going to ever tell you that. And somebody else is going to have to tell you, or you have to read it somewhere because he wasn't that kind of guy. He'll never say, I did this. He was always about grammar. Robinson posted a 3-8 and eight record in his first year, but in 1942, he and his squad finished 9-0 and oh and did not allow a single point. Making Grambling great meant winning games, but Coach Rob also knew getting a Grambling Tiger on an NFL team was the next step. In 1945, a tank would lead the way. Running back Paul Younger earned the nickname Tank by running over everything that got in front of him. As a freshman, Tank led the nation in scoring with 25 touchdowns. In his senior year, he was voted Black College Football's Player of the Year. The Los Angeles Rams signed Younger in 1949, and Tank became the first NFL player from an historically black college or university. Tank played 10 seasons in the NFL and was named to the Pro Bowl four times. Younger was the first of over 200 Grambling players that would eventually play professional football. Robinson coached four NFL Hall of Famers, including Willie Davis of the Green Bay Packers, Buck Buchanan of the Kansas City Chiefs, Charlie Joyner of the San Diego Chargers, and Willie Brown of the Oakland Raiders. It instilled a lot of things in me and, and a lot of players who came to Grambling is to follow in his footstep and uh, you'll be all right. Grambling's Will Brown is considered one of the best defensive backs to ever play the game. A Super Bowl champion with the Oakland Raiders in 1977, Willie was named to the Hall of Fame in 1984. He was one of the main reasons why I am in the Hall of Fame because of uh, his leadership and his toughness and uh, work harder than everybody else and those kind of things paid off for me. Oh yeah, no question about it, he was there. Uh, he and Al Davis have a, a great relationship. Al Davis has been on at Oakland Raiders and he wanted to make sure, and I wanted to make sure that Coach Robinson was there. Uh, so he, he, you know, he had a good time. And it, was, it was a fun time for me, fun time for him because he was proud of the things that happened. And being a part of me, you know, growing up and with his leadership and his guidance, uh, another one of his football players made it in the Hall of Fame. There would be more mountains former Grambling Tigers would climb. James Shaq Harris became the first black player to lead a team into the NFL playoffs. But it would be another quarterback that would give Coach Robinson the finest hour he ever had in football. Zachary, Louisiana's Doug Williams played quarterback at Grambling in the mid-70s for Coach Robinson. Before Williams would make one of the biggest marks in NFL history, Doug was just hoping to get along with his new football teammates. Man, I can remember the first meeting um, we had, you know, in the room with all these guys that had played, was playing with them, seniors and juniors, and how I am a little, little freshman just walking in and Coach Rob got that way of motivating you, man. He up there talking and he had wanted everybody to stand up and say your name and tell them where you're from and all that. And I can remember, uh, I'm Doug Williams from Zachary, Louisiana. And, and Coach Rob said, hell, tell them again. Them damn quarterbacks don't hear you. Tell them again. And I said, Doug Williams, Zachary, Louisiana. Um, he said, hell, baby. He going to make y'all work. He going to take y'all job. That's his way of motivating. I didn't know at the time what he was doing, you know, so I'm pumping my chest like, man, I'm a play. And I remember Joe Como, bless his soul, he just got up. He was the quarterback at the time. He looked around. He said, hey, coach, 
he ain't played in the swag yet. <laughs> and I just felt like going up under the table. But uh, hey, if there's anybody who can motivate you, man, it was, it was Eddie Robinson. Nearly 10 years after being drafted in the first round by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1978, Williams led the Washington Redskins to a Super Bowl championship. After almost being knocked out in the first quarter, Williams threw four touchdown passes on the way to a dominating 42-10 victory over John Elway and the Denver Broncos. Williams was the first African-American quarterback to win a Super Bowl. He was also named MVP. Coach Rob was in the stands, and um, after the game, Coach Rob was in the tunnel. And um, I think between the both of us, I don't know who threw more snot, him or me. I mean, <laughs> we, we cried, man, and uh, it, was, it was tears of joy. Uh, it was emotion, it was exciting, and uh, I can remember him telling me that um, it wasn't so much me playing the game, the fact that I got up off the ground after they got hurt. He said that was more to him than anything, he said, because he's a firm believer when you get knocked down, the most important thing is to get up. And uh, he said that was the finest hour that he had ever had in football in his whole life. And you're talking about a man that had been coaching a bunch of years. For him to give you that accolade, I think that in itself speaks volumes. James Harris and I, we talk all the time. And, you know, we look around and, and we look at a lot of guys who've been in our positions. And we always say one thing, the reason why we were successful, we had an Eddie Robinson. And, and that's not from a football standpoint, but that's from just being a man, being an American, and knowing how to deal with real life. And I think Coach Robinson taught us all that. Grambling football became so well known across the country thanks to a well thought out promotional game plan. The media blitz began in the 40s when Grambling hired a publicity man and signed a radio deal with KRUS AM in Ruston to produce a delayed broadcast on Sunday mornings. Coach Robinson said it was a source of pride and made the students feel big time. The young kids were listening Sunday mornings and the preachers were changing the times of their services. Like everything else, Coach Robinson tried to keep up with what was going on at the white colleges. Even the Grambling marching band kicked into high gear at halftime with fast-paced, soulful performances. That Grambling spirit would continue over the decades. At the peak of power, Robinson proudly paraded his Tiger teams across the country and around the world on barnstorming tours. Grambling scheduled games against other historically black schools in venues that included Yankee Stadium, the Rose Bowl, even Japan, while he was ringing up nine National Black College Championships and 17 Southwest Athletic Conference titles, Eddie Robinson also made friends with some of the biggest names in sports, including George Steinbrenner, owner of the New York Yankees. George Steinbrenner, the owner, and Eddie Robinson got to be great friends. And, uh, you know, Grambling played at Yankee Stadium, football game. But Eddie Robinson was able to take the uh, Grambling into New York and play. So they developed a friendship. Then I met George, and he wanted to bring the Yankees down for fundraising. And thanks to Eddie's connections, the Grambling baseball team played exhibition games with the New York Yankees in 1979, 89, and 97. And then when the Yankees came, Oh, man, it was the greatest thing in the world for me to exchange lineups with, with all these great Joe Torre and all that. Joe and I talk now about that. It was the greatest thrill. It was Eddie Robinson who prepared me to be whatever I am. Kings of sport, everyday people, and leaders of the free world. Coach Eddie Robinson and wife Doris mingled with them all. They visited U.S. presidents, including Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton, during Grambling's glory years. President Clinton even called Eddie on October 7, 1995, when Coach Rob became the first coach in college football history to win 400 games. President, I hope that God will continue to bless you and let you lead us into the 21st century. I'm on your team. In classic Eddie Robinson form, teamwork and a well thought out game plan would conquer any 
and all foes. One of the greatest opponents Eddie Robinson and his Grambling Tigers ever faced was segregation. Even when Paul Tank Younger boarded a train in 1949 out of Grambling for the Los Angeles Rams training camp, he rode in a colored only rail car. Tank couldn't ride with whites, but he could play in the NFL. And through it all, Robinson navigated his teams through the Jim Crow laws in the 1940s and the civil rights movement of the 60s all with the same thoughtful diligence of drawing up a team playbook. Robinson's system challenged racism by proving that a black man could be a good football coach, by proving that a black man could play in the NFL, by proving that a black man could run a successful business, become teachers, doctors, lawyers, or anything they dreamed they could be. Coach Robinson prepared his players to play many positions, including father, husband, and community leader. Robinson's success sent a message to all society. When his football factory created over 200 NFL players, it paled to his team's 80% graduation rate that launched careers in other fields. He never talked about being angry, and I never saw him be angry. Uh, I, it's not his temperament. Eddie Robinson's autobiography is called Never Before, Never Again. And when co-author Richard Lapchick first met Robinson, it was momentous for more than one reason. The night I met him was in April of 1997. It was the 50th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. And Coach and I watched the ceremonies on television at a Holiday Inn in Ruston. And I realized while I was watching it that these were two men named Robinson who helped change America because there's something about sport. The roles they both played were a little bit different. Jackie Robinson was a little more outspoken and brash. I think Coach Robinson's model was to show by his example and the example of his student athletes that the laws of Jim Crow and, and the racist policies at the time were just absolutely absurd policies to look at people as human beings and what they're capable of doing. Coach Robinson demonstrated that day in, day out. And it was very important that, that he taught me those kind of things, you know, how to to quote with, with you know, people in the world, how to get along with this and that, and no matter what color, no matter what race, uh, how, to, uh, how to get along with everybody. I talk to our guys about talking matters out and trying to eliminate these problems. So this is the way I see it. I just don't have time to be mad and doing all these kind of things, but I tell you one thing, whatever I have done, I couldn't have done it unless it, it had been in America. Robinson eventually tallied 408 victories before retiring in 1997. That mark stood as the best in college football until the 2003 season. Coach Eddie Robinson died at age 88 on April 3rd, 2007. His body laid in state at the Capitol Rotunda as over 5,600 mourners paid their final respects. A memorial service was held in the chamber of the House of Representatives. Eddie Robinson, whose real life's work is measured in the faces of those he met along the way, instilling respect for themselves and others, promoting the belief that they could be whatever they wanted to be, and drilling into each mind the responsibility they will have in their communities to give back more than they take, teaching them to be better, not bitter. Don't gripe, be great. Coach Robinson truly became larger than life. When he took the reins at Grambling, segregation was still the law in Louisiana. But even that could not stop his determination and belief that in America, anyone could succeed. Today, I know it's some heavy hearts, a lot of burden. The day was a great day. I spent all day around the Capitol. I spent more time around the Capitol today than I've done in my whole life. <laughs> but it's been a great day for so many people. Pass by, take pictures, shake hands, to see parents bring kids. Because the only way they're going to know who Eddie Robinson is, what Eddie Robinson is, 
and what he'll always be is for us to tell them. War hymns will ring from shore to shore. Oh, Grambling, dear Grambling, we love thee, dear old Grambling. And in the words of Coach Daddy Robinson, hell, baby, tell them something good about Grambling. And now, Nearly three years after Coach Rob's passing, the story and legacy is preserved and protected at the Eddie G. Robinson Museum, located on the campus of Grambling State University. Longtime friend so and colleague people. Wilbert Ellis promised so Coach Rob people. that one day there would be a museum. Wilbert promised that just days before Eddie died. I said, Coach, we're going to build that museum. We're going to get that museum. He said, oh, boy, you ain't going to do that. And just the other day, he got word that it's done. I know he did. You promised him, didn't you? I promised him. I thank God for all the people. The people that would write about him, the TV people. People that stayed with us and made it happen. It's a joyful moment for me, but it's a tough moment. He used to say, the first thing cry would be a sissy, and I guess I am. But I'm out of joy and love and respect for a great man. He's happy too? Yes, he's happy. He's very happy up there. I know he said, well, they got it done. Oh.